Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of my fireside chat that I have been doing inconsistently. Just when I think that there's a conversation that needs to happen, I jump on and, and have a community chat um, that is coined fireside chats from the 80s. Uh, you know, it's a it's kind of a political journalism thing. So it, just to give a little history, like a tiny, tiny portion of history on why I call it a fireside chat. So I've been seeing a lot lately, um, us girls talking about um, holding each other accountable. And I think that it's a fair conversation. Don't get me wrong. I understand wanting to align with people that I hold you to account, but I have a perspective. I have a theory and I have a thought. If you don't know, I have been having this conversation for years now, certainly since 2021. I kind of began diving into what friendships uh, are like to me and the, what I value about them, right? And so that's what the topic is about today. It's about friendships among amongst women and um, how we relate to one another, love on each other, care for one another. Um, this is a conversation that I've been trying to have for uh, quite some time, so I'm glad we're here. Before I get into my point and perspective, I have to address the post that I shared on social media maybe a little bit over a week ago. And I had mentioned that I have somewhat of a disdain for women. So it's always been easier for me to relate to men. And I think that I talk a little bit about that in my book. And I think that sometimes innately, we have this desire to, um, have to be jealous, to be envious, and to compete over men. And it's just a strand in our character that I just never, never was fond of. And I've seen in many relationships growing up where women use manipulative tactics to get what they want. And I would always see that and I did not like it. It was something about women that I didn't like. And so if I knew or thought that a woman used manipulative ta tactics to secure a relationship or to secure uh, anything. I've, all, I ha I've always had this dislike deep down inside. And I, I used to think that, you know, I can mask it with a smile and pretend that I like the woman or women if I feel like they've used manipulation to get what they want. But I've learned now that I'm older that it always comes through. It always show. So I said, let me just put it on the table. Let me talk about it. Let me share how I feel. And maybe either other women can relate or they can help put me in my place. Because I think that maybe society has shaped it so that we think that we have to do these things. And so it's just always been a little bit harder for me to feel comfortable with having relationships with women because the trust factor wasn't there. I just didn't trust them. And I know a lot of women feel that way about men, but I feel a little different just because of my upbringing and the things that I saw. I was on the other end of seeing, you know, what men go through when they um, marry, when they have kids with women, just the games that women play sometimes and the control that comes into play that I dislike. And I always said that if this is what relationships and keeping a man has to look like, I want no parts in it. And I feel like, you know, even in relationships that men to some degree have become used to that. And when you don't operate in that way, with a lot of men, because I think that they've just been used to seeing that type of behavior from their mothers, from other women, sisters, and things like that. When you don't do it, it's like, <laughs> where's the games? <laughs> where's the mind games? Where's all the stuff that you women do? And it's just like, no, I'm gonna keep it straight. I'm gonna keep it, I'm very pragmatic, if you will. Like, uh, I'm very pragmatic. Uh, when it comes to my relationships with people, I'm very upfront, I keep things out out there up front in the open 
And so that's just been, when I use the word disdain, that, I mean, I think it's pretty true. That has been my feelings towards women and it hasn't hindered my friendships though. I have always been able to have long lasting loving friendships because I know that women do have good in their hearts. It's not like I think that all women are like this. Um, just usually women that have experienced hurt and pain to some degree and are low, I have low, uh, they are very insecure, lack confidence. And uh, I think that a lot of women who have those characteristics that I described fall into that category. And so um, that has been hard for me to navigate through and I'm still learning. But I have been able to sustain and keep really good solid friendships. <laughs> Probably some of my friends are probably like, girl, <laughs> whatever. But I think the truth is, regardless of what um, me and my friends go through at the end of the day, they know I'm there. If someone is there to, if someone has to be there for them, they know that they can call me to be there and I'm coming in a drop of a dime for any of them. And it really makes me think about um, characteristics of love defined in the Bible. And you know, friendships can be rewarding. Of course they are, because you have companionship through a lot of your good times and bad times in your life and cel celebration, times when it's time to celebrate. You have your good, good, good Judy's there, if you will. <clears throat> but one word that really sticks out for me when it comes to friendships is long suffering. I feel like that is a very important component to friendship is the long suffering component because a lot of times we have to endure in life we have to go through things and sometimes our friends may not agree with our decision making and the things that brought us to the point where we have to go through something and whether it's a relationship maybe whether it's a move a career choice or anything like that but a good friend is long suffering through troubled times they're there Regardless of the reason, good friends don't judge you. They don't operate in condemnation. And it's hard to be a really good friend <clears throat> when your job in that friendship is to be to hold your friend to account. Usually for me, when I think about accountability partners, I think about mentors or people who understand that I'm trying to meet something in life, a particular thing, and they've done it. And they're willing to mentor me and hold me accountable and do those things like give me a call or say, how come you haven't done this? We put this on the calendar. Have you done it? Let me see it. Things like that to hold me accountable to progress. And usually I have mentors for that and people who have already been successful in areas that um, in areas that I'm trying to grow in. Whereas my friends, it just doesn't matter. Um, whatever we're going through, we're there for each other. And I really don't want my friends to feel responsible to be my accountability partner. You know, I want them to just be there. That's what I desire in friendships, someone who can just be there. I don't, when I, when I have friendships, my girlfriends, I don't want to go around them necessarily talking about work all the time. Of course, I can talk about my plans. That's great. But one thing that I feel with my friendships is that in the world, I have to show up constantly as someone. It's a part of me, but <clears throat> when I'm with my friends, I get to show up as exactly who I am and who I'm comfortable in being. And when I'm that person, I feel like that's when my cup is filled. When the room is just love and I don't have to feel like I have to put on for anybody. I can just be myself in those moments, give me the opportunity to show me that I'm good enough as I am. So wherever I go in the world, it's okay to be that girl. I don't always have to show up putting on because I get those moments to exercise who I am. And I feel like to a degree, that's a portion of filling my cup up when I'm around people who allow me to do that. And it's the same with family. Being, being around family. That's why it's good to come together with the people that you love and, you know, have those Sunday meals and those girl brunches and those times out because we need that to fill up. And um, that's important. That, that's so important. So that is how I feel about growing and like my friendships. They are 
definitely a part of my long journey in life, whether they fall off, whether they stay the course with me, you know, and we meet again, and whether they fall off and we meet again in the future, or if they stay the course with me regardless, you know, if I consider you a friend, you're my friend forever. And, you know, it's not just, uh, I can say it's not just temporary, my friendships, it, and it's not many. <laughs> we don't, I don't have any friends. I have about five good ones that I can call on or go around and be and, and, and get filled, if you will. And so I think that it's important to us to really examine what we think friendships are, what we want from our friends, if, if, um, if we have them and if not, maybe go back to some friends who you feel like maybe you, you missed judge the relationship <clears throat> and you had a really good friend but you were trying to put um boundaries around the friendship that hold them to 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 something that's probably not fair um, we do that because we are we have a nature of being somewhat controlling and i think that that's something that individually we have to work on that's why i feel it's important for us to do our own work Hence why I wrote the book, As I Felt by Nia. So we can do self-examinations and realize how we are showing up in the relationships that we are having. Um, because right now, when it comes to relationships, friendships, all these things, it, it, we're getting away from uh, being relational for some reason. I don't know why. I'm sure there's a sociologist somewhere who is doing work to research to figure this out. But it, it just seems that way. But I think that having these conversations and creating a community around wanting to do better and wanting to be better and wanting to be amongst each other and fill up in the room with other women, um, I do get that. I do understand that we have empowerment conferences and all of these things for women and woman, woman dynamics. But um, that's for the moment. You know, that, that's for the moment, and it's always good to do those things. But I'm just thinking about long-term, long-term support, <clears throat> long-term friendship, friendships and things that are um, lasting. That's really based, based off a foundation of love and true friendship and someone who, people, women, who you can really trust and lean on, uh, regardless of what you're going through. And that doesn't come with judgment or condemnation or, you know, who cares? I, I know for me, I don't care. I, I want my friends to be in their best light in whatever it is they're doing in life. I want them to be in their best light. But if they're not, that is not going to hinder my friendship to you. You can be in your darkest moment and be the reason for it. And I'm not going to hang up our friendship and look at you as, oh, she could be doing better, he could be doing better, you know, uh, to, he could be doing treating her better or she could be choosing better choices in life. Your choices in life are yours. If you're my friend, it's my job to be there for you. Now, I can give you wise counsel and say things to you that I think could help you, but it's not my job to force those things on a friend it's just my job to be there as a friend and that's what i that's what i believe that's how i see it that's how i see friendship it doesn't change the fact that i still have issues when it comes to women though <laughs> i still struggle when i'm working on that i am i'm navigating through because i think me cleaning that up in my life will help me create um lines of communication in other areas so that's something i'm working on we're all imperfect people trying our best to be our best selves so since i have you there's two things i want to remind you that april 1st my si self box goes on sale and it comes with my book a journal a cute little pen down here <coughs> and fell down there um and two candles and a little note from me and i'm thinking about adding a t-shirt what do y'all think it's hard for me to think about um how I'm gonna do the size when it comes to my website and making sure that I'm able to um, get the right sizes out to people when they order the box. So I'm, I'm thinking about if I should do that. But the second thing is, I did a talk on my radio show in 2021 
that was about this very topic. And I'm going to leave the link down at the bottom. If you are still engaged in this conversation, then you got to go and listen to that. Um, it's short. It's about the full conversation that I had. It was about 10 minutes, not too long. But I think that it, on the back end of me having this conversation or this chat, that will be a good thing to listen to. So until we have another fireside chat, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Peace.